Whoa, buddy, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Guitarsenal, and we are playing around with a very, very special amplifier. We're up here at Andrew's Amp Lab, up here in Atlanta, Georgia. Jeff is the gentleman that works on just about all of my amplifiers, so all the sonic bliss that you hear on the channel, hopefully bliss, uh, comes from Jeff directly, and he built a very, very special amplifier for a customer, and, uh, and the customer is returning from overseas uh, from deployment, and I uh, definitely want to thank him for his service and welcome home. And this is a great amp to treat yourself to coming home. Uh, so definitely want to give a shout out to him and thank him for his service. And this is a clone of Steel String Singer number no. two, which belongs to John Mayer. And it is a, uh, a very, very, very faithful clone of uh, the Dumble Amplifier. Now we've talked about Dumble Amplifiers in some of our previous videos. And we've hinted to maybe getting a hold of some of the clones and checking them out. Um, it's one of the most cloned boutique style amplifiers pretty much that there is, okay? Um, they are wonderful and they sound just very, very lovely. And uh, the Steel String Singer is a very clean amplifier. Um, it takes uh, several nods from many different things uh, over the years in terms of circuitry, but it is a unique Dumble amplifier th that came from Alexander Dumble's mind and his genius. And uh, they're just wonderful. Uh, obviously, serial number two was made for Jackson Brown, and that amplifier now belongs to John Mayer, which, of course, we know he's wonderful and he's, he's a great player and everything like that, and, of course, very famous. Um, but... The Dumble amplifiers always integrate some type of really weird tweaks and things into the design. So uh, the Steel String Singer specifically is a unique amp in of itself. Um, you guys may be familiar with the Overdrive Special. That's another one of uh, Alexander Dumble's amplifiers. Robin Ford plays an a, uh, Overdrive Special. I know Santana plays an Overdrive Special. Stevie Ray Vaughan used to own a Steel String Singer, which I believe his brother Jimmy owns now. Uh, has taken ownership of and of course John Mayer plays on Dumble amplifiers and uh, there's been a lot of great players over the years that have trusted Dumble amplifiers for their tone and uh, they are wonderful so you have I'm going to go through the control panel because I know this is this is sort of different and odd and not really something people are going to see very often and we don't get to see it very often because this is not a common style of amplifier you have two different inputs a normal and an FET the FET adds like kind of a bit of a, a high gain kind of sound or higher gain. Remember, the Steel String Singer is really intended to be just pristine, crystal, beautiful clears and highs, okay? And um, clean tone is what I'm trying to get at. It's a very clean amplifier, okay? We have a volume, all right? And I'm going to go all the way to the right end of the panel. You have a level, so it is a master volume amp. So you can crank this volume and just kiss up the level and get some sort of, uh, you know, sort of master volume-like distortion if you want. If you want this thing to act like just a non-master volume amp, then you just crank either or and treat it as such. All right, you have a couple of different switchers here. Uh, switches. Switchers. I guess they are switchers when you switch them. But you've got some switches, a bright, a deep, a guitar and mic input. The mic input... Uh, when you turn that dipper down, it's really low gain. I guess that would be for like a harmonica mic or something like that. You've got treble, middle, bass. Not unlike a Fender Bassman or a Twin Reverb or something like that in terms of that. You've got a couple of different filters. There's seven positions on each of these filters for highs and lows. And we're going to try our best to go over all of them. They are subtle. Okay, This amplifier gives you a lot of ability to get it just the right sound in that you want. Okay, there's tons of tones you can chase in this bad boy if you've got the time. Now, we're going to give you the, the dollar tour here, okay, because Jeff has allowed us to commandeer his shop, and we don't want to take up all of his time. All right, there's a switch for on and off to turn the reverb on and off. And unlike a Fender amplifier where you just have a simple reverb control, you have a send and return, which allows you to really dial in that reverb exactly the way you want. And this switch turns the reverb on and off. You have a mid boost that only affects the master volume. Okay, so remember, guys, when we talk about Dumble amplifiers, we always mention that they're such a mid range heavy kind of thing. Like they've got this mid range hump. They totally do. Now, um, we're running through a single four ohm. Uh, actually, we're running through two speakers, and only one of them's mic'd because we had to run two speakers to get it down to four ohms. Uh, but, you know, it, it sounds fantastic. Okay. 
and I hope it's coming through in the recording because this amplifier ha imparts such a fidelity on the tone of the guitar and we are going to stack a few pedals. I do have a Zen drive. I am a Robin Ford fan, tried and true. I love Robin Ford's playing, so I, I, I've always kind of been a fan of the Zen drive just from hearing Robin Ford use it. Now I will say, comparing this to someone like Robin Ford is almost a little unfair. Like Larry Carlton plays through Dumbles, Robin Ford plays through the Dumble Overdrive Special. It's not really that kind of amp. It's really a clean tone kind of thing. And even over the, the whole spectrum of these Stratocaster pickups, there's so many usable tones in this thing. So let's, let's just tinker and go over it. And we may wind up adding maybe a few little things, but I really want to emphasize the clean tone of this amplifier. Now we do have some 60 cycle hum in the room. Just want to make note of that. So you're going to hear that and that's okay. Uh, here's the amplifier just as we had it set for the uh, little bit of noodling in the intro. We're going to really focus on leaving the treble, bass, and mids sort of straight up, okay? And we're going to really focus on hearing the filters and the switches and the different inputs because I feel like that's really where this amplifier shines is with that sort of thing. So let's give it a listen. Very clean, very glassy, very pretty. Uh, let's get the filter controls both on the low uh, and the high, just in the middle, and let you hear that. And I'm not going to change anything on the guitar. This is the bridge pickup. Very glassy, very pretty. Go through a few of the pickup selections and we'll play with some of the filter controls. Guys, bear in mind, this is my first exposure to this amplifier. I haven't really had a lot of time to tweak uh, sounds. We mainly wanted to make this video as a service for Jeff so he, people can really see that, you know, these amps that he's cloning, man, he's just, he's doing a really great job with them and everything. <laughs> Very, very clean and it responds just really, really great to picking dynamics. I noticed when I was digging in there, I was getting maybe just a little bit of dirt, but not really like a, it's not like a Fender amplifier breaking up. You hit it harder, it just gets louder. Okay, so it responds to picking dynamics much, uh, much, very much in the way that a twin reverb would. You know, twin reverbs have this really loud overhead, right? And this is a very loud amplifier. So, you don't get that dirt when you dig in, it's just louder and it just stays clean and has this fidelity to it that 
is just very, very uncharacteristic of any other amplifier there is. It's, it's, being in the room with it, it's, it's very, very special. You know, it's not going to give you anything that you don't give it. It, it just, it literally, it just is a <laughs> input device for you to put your guitar into the air for the people to hear. It, it's really, really a special amplifier. Um, the reverb we have set a little bit on the low side. It will obviously get into some, some crazy territory if you wish for it to. Tell you what, I'm going to put the amplifier on standby for just a moment. Okay. It's very quiet running. Okay. I'm going to put it into the FET. And we're going to play with a few of the dipper switches. And we'll go through some of these settings on the filter. That's really what sets this amplifier tremendously apart. Okay. And I did see the inside of this amplifier. Um, you know, Jeff was showing me the layout. And the layout is extremely, like, just about exactly close to the real Dumble. And it's my theory, and I, I know maybe Jeff agrees with me as well, but I almost wonder if Alexander Dumble was just so genius that maybe he figured that even the proximity of these uh, parts in relation to each other has something to do with the tone of the amplifier, right? You know, you have things such as, like, oscillation of certain components that may occur if things are too close to each other or if there's a shielding issue or something like that within an amplifier. And maybe the location of these boards is specific. So he even went through the effort to exactly place these boards exactly where they are inside of the dumble. So he had to actually come up with a layout as well uh, for this amplifier. So it's, you know, he's got a lot of time in this amp and it, it's, it shows. It turn, turned out really great. Uh, let's listen to it a little bit. Now here's the FET. We've got the filters uh, at noon, and most of the controls relatively noon, a splash of reverb. See, the FET is supposed to get a little bit of kind of a distorted sound a bit. Yeah, that's a little bit of dirt. Let's give that a listen. Now, Chad, it might be a little loud. You good? <laughs> it's like clean feedback. <laughs> you know what I mean? It it's very very clean sounding. Now we've got a little bit of a little bit of a trebly component there in our in our sound. Let's see if we can tone that down just a bit. Let's get that volume back a bit. Let's try breaking this filter in the clockwise position should reduce the high frequencies. Let's leave the let's click that low back one. So that should give us a, a much more accentuated low end and a less accentuated high end. That was a little glassy. Uh, a beautiful sound, but glassy. Let's give this a listen. Let's see if that toned her down just a bit. That volume up just a bit. This amplifier really will give you a ton of different sounds if you're willing to chase the tones a bit. And you gotta think that the people that Alexander Dumble's building these amplifiers for were very discerning people in terms of the type of tones that they wanted. They knew what they wanted. They wanted very specific sounds. And this allowed them to chase sounds in a way the Fender amplifier just really won't give you the ability to chase. It gave you some more options, you know what I mean? And those options are distinctive to this particular type of amplifier. So, um, all right, let's give this a listen. I'm going to keep it on the treble pickup. And we'll try to, you know, maybe hit a boost in the Zen Drive a little bit too. I know we've been playing clean, but I've been really wanting to accentuate the clean sounds of this amplifier. We could literally do this all day. I know we don't have a lot of time, but let's just give uh, this setting a listen. We did bump that filter back on the low. Actually, we boosted the low and then we decreased the high just a little bit.
That's boss, boss clean tone. Now, I don't know if you can really hear it, you know, through the recording, but I feel it under my fingers. There's this, where I've got that filter set, it, it's so weird. It's like there's this low punchiness under my fingers that I can feel when I'm playing through the amp. And it, and you hear it, of course, obviously you hear it, but it's strange. It, it is totally a unique kind of clean tone that you do not get out of a Fender amplifier. I have a feeling that if I had a Fender amplifier like a Super Reverb or a Twin dialed in the way I've got this dialed in, you get that pretty glassiness on the top of the sound, but there's a mid-range, a musical mid-range frequency that is in this that it, it's glorious. And you know, mids are one of those types of frequencies that tend to sort of be the bane of a lot of guitar players' existence, right? Some people want to really just scoop that mid out. Like on a super reverb, it sounds great to have the mid maybe on about two or three and get the, the treble and bass to taste and kind of have that scooped mid sound. And because of the open back nature of a super reverb cabinet, they have a very scooped uh, mid-range frequency response anyway, just because of the way that they're designed and those four 10-inch speakers. You know, it's a punchy amp. This amp is punchy, articulate, glassy, and with a beautiful musical mid-range. Yeah, totally, totally. Woo, so pretty. You notice I'm just picking with my fingers and my thumb and when I really dig in, the amp just gets louder and gives me some nice response. Let's hit a, uh, a super fat fuck boost. All right, this is a germanium boost. So uh, let's see how this sounds. <laughs> so it gets that beautiful, clean, chicken picking kind of thing with just a touch of that germanium boost. It's beautiful and totally believable. Let's listen to the Alfonso Hermita Zen Drive. <laughs> All right. I hope Robin Ford hopefully out there isn't going, ah, and plugging his ears. But um, this is a different kind of thing. But let's listen to the Zen Drive. Definitely one of my favorite overdrive pedals. <laughs>
just sings and sustains, you know, in every type of setting. It's just beautiful. I mean, we can chase sounds, and we certainly are going to chase a few sounds. Um, such a fantastic amplifier. We've got the deep switch engaged. Let's try bringing the deep switch off, the bright switch up, okay? Let's uh, go ahead and increase our low, just one more setting on the filter. And let's go ahead and, uh, since, we've, when, since we've hit the bright switch, let's go ahead and engage this high right where it is. We're going to leave the reverb where it's at. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the amplifier on standby real quick. You can listen. You can hear it's running pretty quiet. Okay. We're going to put it back on the normal input. We're going to go for a, a glassy, clean uh, neck pickup sound on a Stratocaster. Indicative of what I would attempt to get out of a Super Reverb amplifier. That's what I'm going for here is kind of my tried and true Super Reverb sound out of the Steel String Singer. A fantastic amplifier, guys. It's, it's such a joy to play through. If I'm not careful, I'm going to walk out of here uh, <laughs> putting down a deposit <laughs> on one of these things. All right. Yeah. All right, let me increase our volume. Totally, totally super reverb territory, wouldn't you say, Chad? Absolutely. I'm going to have to increase that volume because I noticed that I did lose maybe just a scotch of volume overall when I, when I turned that deep switch off and engaged the bright switch and went back to normal. Uh, the overall output of the amplifier is considerably lower. Um, so it's not really one of those things you're going to like play around with when you're, I guess, playing live. You, you really want to kind of set this thing where you want it and kind of get her dialed in and leave it there. All right, let's give this a listen. Fantastic. All right, now we've got the bright switch engaged. Let's try the bridge pickup. And this is the way that, you know, when I get that kind of glassy um, neck pickup thing on my Strat, on my Super, uh, usually when I go to the bridge pickup, I'll dial back that tone just to scotch on the bridge pickup and try to get that kind of spanky, glassy thing, but without being like ice pick territory, okay? High frequency, you don't want to sound like an ice pick driving into your ears. You just want it to sound smooth and articulate. And I think people tend to use those high frequencies as a crutch because you've got to be able to cut through the mix. And the high frequencies, when you're in a band setting, tend to cut through a mix a lot better than the lower frequencies, right? So that's what makes this amp so cool is those mid-range frequencies can still give it some glassy sort of f fidelity, but without being ice pick uh, territory. Okay, let's give it a listen. Sorry, that one's free. <laughs> yeah. 
Hear that sustain? When I let a chord ring out, you'll hear, you hear this sustain, and it's, it's not like glassy and top end, even though the, the bright switch is engaged. It's like this mid-range feedback, but it's clean. You hear that? Let me let a chord ring out. Yeah, it's like this ringing mid-range that is 110% noticeable. And uh, it's very musical and it's very inspiring. I could ring chords and lines out on this thing all day long. I really wanted you guys to kind of get an idea uh, of what this amplifier can do. You know, and the, the bad thing about it is that there's not a lot of basis that I have to go off of. It's not like I'm going to get to call John Mayer and say, hey, brother, bring uh, Steel String Singer number two down and let's do an AB here, right? But we don't have that ability to do that. So that's what makes the Dumble clone market so odd, right? Is that there's not a lot of <laughs> examples that people have to really compare something to because the amplifiers are extremely expensive. Um, a real deal amplifier such as this one made by Alexander Dumble would likely be a $100,000 plus amplifier. Um, you know, but Jeff can build these if you guys are interested. If somebody wants to do a Dumble style amp, uh, definitely get with Jeff here at Andrew's Amp Lab. He can hook you up. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I may see one of these in my future. Who knows, okay? Uh, and one thing I want to mention, the speaker that we're using is an Electra Voice Force 12, okay, that's, uh, that you're hearing that's mic'd up here. Uh, so that's a very, uh, you know, distinctive speaker in terms of what you'd expect to pair with an amplifier like this. Um, but yeah, you know, we can, we can go all day, but I really want you guys to get an idea of what this thing can sound like. I am super excited to see how it records because, you know, a guitar player getting a hold of a real deal Dumble amplifier is kind of like the holy grail of guitar tone. Everyone associates Alexander Dumble with mystique, sonic mystique, and sonic bliss, right? Everybody hears all these players that play Dumble and they're like, wow, they're such a great player. Tone is in the hands, guys, and you have to, you have to give it, you have to give something to get something back. It's not going to play for you, but these amplifiers really do allow you as an individual to express yourself and it is a very functional tool for that job and it's not going to hide anything, it's not going to take anything away but it is going to assist you in doing that and, and just such such wonderful amplifier. Um, one more thing before we go, I'm going to hit this mid-range hump and again it's only going to affect the master volume which we've got relatively high and you notice that you know even though this amp is up pretty loud right now uh, we've got it probably 75% of the way up on both the volume and the level knob. It still remains articulate and clean. You're not getting a ton of distortion unless you really dig in with a pick. But it's still, I wouldn't really call it like distortion. It's really just more of a singing mid-range feedback. And it, it really does sound more like it's just mid-range frequencies that are really giving you that, that kind of feedback characteristic. Okay, let me just shut up and play. Thank you. 
That's the neck pickup, sounding very beautiful, glassy, but not, not biting. And uh, guys, I just want to reemphasize, this amp is turned up pretty loud. We're shaking the windows in here. It's, it's really loud and really clean. So guys, hopefully this gave you an idea of what the Steel String Singer can sound like. Now this isn't Alexander's amp directly, but it is a very faithful reproduction of Steel String Singer number two by uh, Jeff here at Andrews Amp Lab. So if you're interested, give him a call. I'm sure he can build one for you. Um, fantastic amplifier. I mean, he's, he's even got like the cosmetics, the chassis, everything exactly like the original. And this is probably the closest thing I'm ever going to come to uh, in terms of playing a, a Dumble amplifier. Uh, and this is, you know, it's pretty legit. It's such a wonderful sounding amplifier. I could sit here and play on this thing all day. But hopefully you guys got some tones out of this thing. Hopefully I did this wonderful amplifier some justice here today. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to make a little bit more racket, let you get back to your day. We post every Monday and Friday here on Guitar Arsenal. Make sure you tune into our videos. Click that notification bell. Call Andrews uh, up here if you have any questions. Or if you need amp work done, you're in the Atlanta area. He's definitely the go-to guy. Make sure you check him out. He's a, he's a good dude. He really knows his stuff. All right, a little bit more noise here. Let's get rid of the mid-range. Let's turn our high filter up one more. Our low filter all the way to the left, which should be our, our lowest pass. <clears throat> Leave everything where it's at here. Let's get the deep switch engaged. Let's disengage the bright switch. And then let's do that FET one more time. All right. <clears throat> we'll do that for the outro. I mean, you can chase a lot of sounds with this bad boy. All right. Now, this is probably going to be a little hot. Oh, no, we're good. I think we're good. Well, it sings, doesn't it? <laughs> That's very low. Let's back that low off just a bit. Very distinctive filters, in the way these things sound. They're very, very different. Okay. All right, guys, enjoy your day. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way. Make sure you tune in. All right. <laughs>